Welcome to the Nightcap. It's your girl, Carolina Sanchez, and I have a question for you. Once a hoe, always a hoe? Mm. We've debated it over and over again. Can you turn a hoe into a housewife? Well, we're not talking about the ladies tonight. We're talking about the men. Can you turn a hoe into a husband? Well, we've got the author who literally wrote the book on it. We've got a doctor to set us straight. And we have somebody I'm going to take the liberty of calling a hoe who's been on the show many of times, and hopefully he'll agree. We'll see. All right, we got the author first up, so let's get into it. Yeah, what's up for a nightcap? Chill, you know, kick back. All right, we got to get into it. We got to get into it. The author himself is here, C.B. Ellington. Yes. You wrote From a Hoe to a Husband. I did. So I really hope you come with insight. <laughs> this tells me you used to be a hoe. Is that accurate? Oh, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely accurate. I can own that. Okay. I can own that. Um, originally, the book was an eight-year-ago idea. Okay. Um, I've been married twice mm. um, prior to that. It was a... Fun lifestyle. A fun lifestyle. I was single. Okay. But in the same time, I enjoyed every bit of being single. Maybe a little bit too much, some would say. Would uh, the women you were courting agree that you were single? I would like to hope so, but probably not, no. Okay, some of them thought no. it was a little bit more serious. But there was no commitment on There was no title. It was just, I'm dating, so I can date okay. who I want to date. That was the mindset back okay, then. Okay, can we clear that up right quick? Do you think people <laughs> need to put titles on it in order for them to be in agreement with where they are in their relationships? I don't operate well in black in gray area, so black and white would be perfect. Yes. Oh, so gray means you're going to hoe out. Gray, if we ain't got no title on it, and it's, I'm dating you, then mm -hmm. I can date who I want to. Okay, as so. As long as I'm open with you. Right, that makes sense. Okay, so let's go back. Eight years ago, you thought of putting this together. Right. After years in the military, yep. the college life, yep. hoeing around, and you got three different kids from three different baby mamas. Yes. So um, you've done your share. <laughs> yes, you've done your share absolutely. of hoeing around. So why did you decide to talk about the journey of going from that to becoming a husband? To be honest, um, this was like my therapeutic way of forgiving myself. I asked for forgiveness from the mothers of my children, actually. Wow. Um, because once I was able to see what I've done wrong, I was able to hold myself accountable. And then from that point, it was, how can I help other men not make the same mistakes that I made so they can get to a place where they can become husbands? Oh, wow. And stay. <laughs> and stay in the committed right. relationship. Because the dating game right now is crazy. Yes. Yes. I mean, I wouldn't have this show if it wasn't crazy. Exactly. So do you think that all men are hoes before they become husbands? I'm not going to say all. Okay. Um, I can only speak for myself, of course. Right. I won't give too much information on the company I've kept. Some of my friends, we had a like mindsets back then. Yes. It was encouraged behavior. Right. Um, that's described in the book as well, especially in college. Mm -hmm. I went to HBCU, mm -hmm. um, Winston-Salem State University, North Carolina, and we partied a lot. Right. And with that lifestyle came a lot of fun nights and stuff I don't remember mm. <laughs> but mm. it wasn't encouraged behavior and looking back on that now that wasn't the correct way to live at that time but obviously you wrote this because you think there is a form of redemption there yes. is possibility for change absolutely with the proper tools okay what are the tools for me it was therapy hands down therapy. after my second marriage um i knew that the women i dealt with didn't have a problem loving me mm. i had to figure out why i had a problem loving them and that started with self so I knew that I had to get some help. So I checked myself in. Nobody told me, nobody forced me, coerced me. I went and checked in myself. Really? Yeah. Yeah. That was the best move I've ever made in my life. Was starting to go to therapy. Hands do you down. still go to therapy? Yes, I do. Wow. Yep, two and a half years strong now. Wow. Yep. So are you currently in a committed relationship? No. No. I am working on it. Okay. We're getting there. Um, but I know now to set my boundaries per my therapist's advice. Okay. I had very impulsive ways. Mm. And he was like, you need to slow down. You need to get to know Cedric, uh, get your values in order, get your boundaries in order, get your self-worth about you, love you mm -hmm. before you can engage into another person. So the thing before me was always sex first, and mm -hmm. then we'll see if we can make it after that. Mm. And that was the backwards mindset that I had then that I'm trying but to I mean, but now. is that so wrong? Like. I, I mean, feel like having people, sex and having a good <laughs> sexual relationship shouldn't stop you. Shouldn't. Some people want to drive the car before they buy it. I get it. 
but in essence, should that be the basis of the relationship? No, it shouldn't be the basis, but I don't think right. it's, it's a problem to have sex before you get committed. I don't either. But the problem for me was if the sex was, eh, I would kind of checked out early. I feel like that's a preference. Like, I want to have a good sex life. I do. I do. But I also want to get to know who I'm going to be living this life with. Are we a good partner together business-wise? Can we be together spiritually? Are you a good fit for my children? Like, all of that has to come into play, too. And unfortunately for me back then, if the sex was whack, I, was, I, would, I wouldn't even get to that stuff. <laughs> You know what? I am very excited for who's going to be joining us on this couch later. <laughs> because my friend who's coming to join us loves sex. And I feel like he Ooh. would not get in a committed relationship if, uh, if the sex wasn't good. And probably sit there with you. The toughest part. I actually, my second marriage, she was tired one night. Mm. And that deterred me quickly. Wow. Yeah, I checked out right then. The moment she denied you. Yeah. Oh, that's wild. I absolutely did. Okay, Absolutely we're going to have to talk more about this. That. Yep. What? Okay, all right, you stay right there because coming up next, we've got our friend Scott Shunk joining us and a doctor who loves that this man goes to therapy. So you stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking about turning men from hoes to husbands. But first, we had to send my girl Jen out on the streets to see if people think it's possible. Check it out. In your opinion, can you actually turn a male hoe into a husband? For sure. For sure. Elaborate for Because everybody needs a second chance. I'm not the same person I was 20 years ago, and I wouldn't want anybody to put me in the same box. I believe you can. I believe you can. Because if... The person who they're choosing to be with, so fools are all their needs, I think you'll be all right. He got to be willing to change, though, honestly, you know what I'm saying? But um, other than that, mm -mm, probably not. Probably not. No. I mean, if you're going to be a hoe, and you're going to be a hoe, right? And that's, that's, if you want to change, always a hoe. That's what they say, and that's what it is. For the right woman, you absolutely can. Absolutely can. Every man is, treats every woman differently, so it all depends on who they're with. So I have a question for you. Can you actually turn a male hoe into a husband, in your opinion? Is that a possibility? No, ma'am. Come here. You can't turn a hoe into a housewife. Hoes don't act right. They out there in the streets, right? So why? All right, joining us on the couch, we got C.B. Ellington, who we've been talking with, and of course, my favorite host, Scott Shunk, and Dr. Ty Lerman, sex and relationship therapist, is joining us. All right. We got an array of answers. Indeed. And the men who said that you could, or like, it depends on the woman. That's the key. Or the partner. I think it depends on the person. Like, okay, I, I the think individual. there are people that are wired for monogamy and there are people that are not wired for non monogamy. And I think uh, it's not about changing for the right person, it's if they are ready. If it, it, it depends on their values and if they want to settle down and be monogamous. Mm. Uh, I think it's less about the partner and being able to change the hoe than it is about the hoe being ready to change. Mm. Ah. Interesting perspective. Okay, does that, Mr. Interesting Perspective, does that mean yes, you agree? You said a key word, values. That's one thing I had to learn in therapy. I didn't know what my values were. Oh. And if you ask a lot of men that I've talked to, give me five things that you represent your values, they struggle. So if you don't know what you're standing on, then what are you basing everything that you live off of? So I didn't, I had learned that. I really did. I think between what has been said, I think there's definitely, I know that I've changed because of the energy and the relationship of my partner. But I also know that like, you know, like I agree um, with what Ty, what Ty said, like I have to be or whoever has to be ready to make those changes. The point about like waiting to have sex, I mean, I get that, but I totally disagree with it. You know, right. I think you jump in and you, you, you know, you, you, you give it a ride. You do test drive that car before, before you buy it. Right. You know, I think that too is, is based on your values, right? If you're, if you, if you have, if sexuality and sex is a big part of your values and a con and your connection with another human, then yes, that makes right. total sense. If that's the lowest thing on your totem pole, what about our asexual folks? Right. Like, it's not the greatest part of, uh, biggest part of our population. It's less than 2% of the population, but we still exist. Mm -hmm. the, the people out there still exist. So that's, 
they don't care about sexual connection, right? Mm. They, they care about your values and sharing. Are right. you going to be a good parent? Are you going to provide fan financially? Are we good? Are we good match in every other way? Those are higher values. So it just depends on the person. Right. And not in one million years am I going to be going out with that asexual person. Right. 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 So, yeah, so and that's, that's fine that's, for that, ninety-eight yeah. percent of the population. Right. That's that's yeah. the safe way of letting you know that is my right. love language is yeah. physical touch and quality right. time. I'm really telling you, I like to have sex. And Range Rover. Right. right. So. <laughs> right. But earlier. When you were saying that, like you're you're trying to avoid getting into the sexuality of it all, I was like, mm, I don't think you should do that, especially if it's so high on your totem pole. The problem I have now is when I do meet somebody and we jump right into it. If it's good sex, that can lead to problems as well. Okay. So sometimes I kind of I'm hesitant on jumping full speed into it, giving them the platinum package. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't well, we know. Get, well, we get into uh, this is the oxytocin thing. I mean, you know, you know, make a girl come. There's going to be connection. We got oxytocin in this in this whole mix. But I mean, if you gauge, if I, I can't gauge the sex with a partner in the first time. I mean, it's like, I mean, I'm willing to go through that. It's like, you know, I don't think great sex happens till at least the third, fourth, fifth time. But I mean, you can have. Misnomer. Like many people expect that. They're like, oh, if the chemistry is not right, if the sex isn't perfect the very first time we have sex, then this isn't the right person. Mm. And I absolutely agree with you. I think good sex takes time because yeah. you got to learn a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How one person likes sex is not going to be how the next person likes sex. You got to learn their likes, their, their pleasure zones. I think that was my problem early on when I first wrote the book. Back then, if I didn't get my way in that area, I checked out. Quick. I mean, yeah, if she said she was tired and you said, I'm done, And I'm like, that's I'm a husband, wild. why am I being denied? Like, no, that's not gonna fly. And I went to the study room and started watching porn. And she had a problem with that. Oh, that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. All right, y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. stay right there. We'll be right back, baby. Welcome back to the Nightcap. We've been talking about changing men from hoes to husbands and if it's even possible. We've got C.B. Ellington, Scott Shunk, and Dr. Ty Lerman. You started bringing up porn. We're not going to dive into that because that's an entirely <laughs> different episode. But the dependency on sex for somebody, somebody who's a hoe, I assume they just really enjoy that pleasure. During the break, Doc, you were saying not everybody's wired to have sex every day and we need to have that communication, right? Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I mean, everyone's sex drive is in a different place. Mm -hmm. Like, no two people are wired the same way, and a lot of negotiating uh, a good fit in a partnership is is being able to negotiate our sex drives. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, sometimes we're able to do that, and sometimes there's too much of a disparity. If sex is, is a high enough value for us and, and we're not getting our needs met, then it might be appropriate to move on. If that is the high end, uh, that's a deal breaker for you. For, for some people, it's not. Lots of people are in sexless relationships and that's cool for them. For a lot of people, that's not, that's not okay and that will be the end of the relationship for a lot of folks. So it, it's just about navigating the disparity sometimes. Yeah. And that's okay. a lot, as a sex therapist, that's a lot of what I work on when really? couples come in. Oh yeah. It's dealing right. with a sex mm -hmm. disparity. Yep. So are there ways to work, through, like let's say CB was in a committed relationship, got denied one time, and then was like, I'm in the den watching porn. I feel like, number one, that that wasn't such a bad move. Like, you didn't go out and seek somebody else right, right. off the gate. For some people, porn is cheating. That's is what cheating. I got, exactly. Okay, yeah, for some yeah, people, yeah. That, that, that's, I don't well, think you're that that's You're nodding like but this, that, that, Scott. Is well, that no, no, I, 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 mean, I mean, I just, you know, we, the, we, we, we covered a lot in the break. And, uh, you know, the, yeah, I... I I understand that my partner is not always going to be, you know, physically or emotionally or spiritually ready to dive into sex. I've got to make those accommodations. Um, I don't, porn is not my thing. I mean, I make it, I don't watch it, but you know, it's like, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, <laughs> but it's, it's, I mean, I've always got to be understanding of my partner wherever they are or whoever I'm with for that matter. I mean, I can't, I just can't expect it. At the same time, I will not grovel. I will not grovel. So there's, there's, you know, like I'm not going to beg for sex. So there's, there is definitely a line to divine between, you know, what is, what is asking too much, and what are having basic needs met for, yeah. for someone, you know. And it's like, they, you know, I think, I think most couples can probably find their way to that, and most couples can also find their way to a therapist chair and, uh, and, 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 and keep him in a nice jeep. <laughs> 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 All right. So for men out there, who recognize that they're hoes, but they're lonely because they really just want to get booed <laughs> up and get committed. What work should they be doing? You just said something I think is worth, worth noting. Uh, commitment does not equate monogamy. 
Okay. So we can be in a committed relationship and also engage in consensual non-monogamy. Mm. So like, I think that that's a really important piece. Uh, commitment is not monogamous. And so we can, we can be very committed with multiple partners, right? A commitment is our, our dedication to the partner that we're with or partners that we're with. Um, but that, that has nothing to do with monogamy. For right. some people it does. That right. may be their values and that's how they're wired and that's perfectly fine, but it doesn't mm. have to be. So when, when we're talking about like commitment, uh, if, if what we really mean is monogamy, let's say monogamy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I love that. I've definitely, I've definitely been very committed to multiple partners at a time. I mean, there's Did a the compartment. Multiple partners know about. I mean, like, there's ethical, a ethical non-monogamy. <laughs> there's a compartmentalization oh, across Lord. multiple partners. I mean, I, I I'm sorry, I'm, maybe I misconstrued that well, point. <laughs> but tying that back into your question, uh, the, 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 the commitment, right, or, mm -hmm. or the monogamy piece is that we can be hosed with a single partner. Like we can have a lot of sex with, with a monogamous partner. Mm -hmm. So I think it's, it's just about, again, our values and our communication about what we, our needs are and being able to explore those things. Key word, communication. Yes. Communication. And that's what I had to learn. Put that out up front. Well, I think uh, the communication piece is actually step two. Step one is the insight. It's mm -hmm. knowing what your needs actually are Absolutely. and discerning needs from wants. Mm -hmm. You may want to have sex every single day, but your need may be more like at once or twice a week. Maybe it's once a week, maybe yeah. it's once a month, whatever that need is. But the, and that's, the needs are the deal breaker, right? The wants are um, I would like to have, right. and they are different thresholds. The, the point of like the, the, the denial of wants and breaking up with someone, that was probably a want that was missed, right. not a need. Gotcha. Mm. Right, and so some, we, we confuse those things all the time, mm. but the insight is knowing where, the, where is the threshold, where is right. the line in the sand where right. my needs are no longer being met, and then we start talking about it. Mm. That makes sense. All right, so to break w down what I've gathered, number one, somebody else cannot change a hoe into a husband. It has to be the hoe themselves to who that. wants Absolutely. to become the husband, right? And they have to do the inner work, whether it's by themselves or visiting a doctor or a therapist like my guy, Ty. And then third, communicating that needs versus wants with their potential partner or partners. Absolutely. Yeah. Got it? Absolutely. Got it. All right, and you can pick up the book Absolutely. from Hoe to Husband. From Hoe to Husband. Thanks com. for coming on and talking <laughs> about y'all's hoe tendencies and your expertise. I really appreciate it. All right, coming up next, I actually get to go hang out with Lance McCullers and co, because he just opened up a Maven inside Toyota Center. So stay right there. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Nightcap. I am now at Toyota Center where Maven has just opened up and I am with the co-founders, Juan Carlos and Lance McCullers. You may know him, you may not, who knows? Just kidding. All right, this is a big deal. Huge. You guys just, you just opened up here. What are you hoping people get when they come through here? I mean, really what we're trying to accomplish here is, you know, just being able to show people like what we're about. We are really excited to kind of bring you know, this concept here. We also have one at Minute Maid, and we just want people to understand and be able to taste and see the difference uh, before our brick and mortars hit the streets uh, in Houston in 2024. I love that. And Juan Carlos, for people who haven't been to Maven, what can they expect from that menu? They can expect handshake and cocktails, everything from a margarita, mm -hmm. where we make our syrups in house for the margarita, to an old fashioned, made with premium uh, spirits, to our frozen espresso martini, which is made with our um, cold brew concentrate, which is something you'll only find with Maven. And, and that's how you guys started, right? Correct, and then the cold brew country, we actually are selling it to different restaurants and bars across the country. Finally, I mean, obviously our coffee products, our whole bean, our ground coffee, um, and your espresso, cortado, latte, whatever you like to drink. All the, all the different all things the you above, can drink. Yeah. And I love coffee and I love cocktails, but this is the nightcap. And what we tend to do is drink cocktails. So, so what are we okay. gonna do? What are we here to do? Back that glass up, up, baby. Okay, all right, all right so. I'm gonna pour you. Um, our frozen espresso martini. Perfect. Juan's gonna pour one as well, and then one of our guys is gonna make, um, I think, a kind of heel for you. Perfect. We're gonna start off with a glass of our cold brew right here. Oh, that, that's that's what started it all, it's the concentrate. So then we're gonna go with two ounces of our liquor. For Licor you. 43. Lance and Juan Carlos are behind me, already sipping on this uh, frozen espresso martini. <laughs> they say it's a little strong, and uh, you don't need more than one, apparently. Is that right? One for the first half, another for the, for the last two quarters and another for the last two quarters. We're fine training because nobody likes ice chips in their cocks, though. That's right. Are you even getting an orange zest here? Cheers to quality or nothing? Cheers. This Cheers. better be quality or nothing. Cheers. You won't be disappointed. Ah, yeah, Alex! Oh, hold on. That zest. 
Yeah, that's it up, right? That tops it. I've never had that before. I've been doing a lot of drinking. This is very good. I do want to try this uh, frozen. Lance can actually pour himself. I'm proud of him. This is a family, okay? This is a family. I see why. No, that's dangerous. People it's are gonna dangerous. come. Dangerous. People it's are gonna come. Yeah. Per quarter. That's a problem. One per quarter. One per quarter, you better be ride sharing. You better not be driving, of right? Of course, must Uber, absolutely. Drink responsibly. I gotta take a lot ride, to go. And ride share it out. And we're gonna ride share, all right. Well, cheers to y'all. Congratulations on the opening. Hey, the next brick and mortar, y'all inviting me, right? Absolutely, first, first you're night, you're there. All right, all right. Well, that's it for us. Cheers to you, I got some drinking to do. No driving, no driving. And we'll see you guys next time. All right, where are we going, fellas? <laughs>